everyone, it's Data Science Jay here, and today I'm going over the five common mistakes I see data science and engineering candidates make in their interviews. Number one, not defending your resume. One thing that I see on a lot of candidates is that they'll put a lot of really hot buzzword topics on their resume. So they'll put stuff like deep learning, neural network model, using GPT-3, and that's all fine and stuff. But the problem is you do have to defend it. And so once I saw a candidate put on their resume that they worked with PyTorch and they built like a neural network model. But when I actually asked them about that model, they couldn't really go into what a neural network actually did and what the parameters were or how they actually tuned it. I also heard about another situation where a guy was asked about scaling a model after it ran out of GPUs. And this is a neural network model, right? And he had no answer for that. And so the, the main thing to remember here is that it's always important to make sure that every single project that you put on your resume is defendable by you. Personally, I don't even, I didn't do everything that was on my resume but I know exactly how it worked. And that's all that actually matters, right? It's not really feasible for me to have built an entire pipeline from start to scratch for a big company. But at the same time, because I was involved in the process, I know exactly how I'd be able to do it again. I just literally didn't code it myself, right? And so I think that's entirely fine. But at the same time, just remember that you have to defend your resume. So if they ask you about a project, then you have to go deep into that project and know every single bit about it. Because anything that comes up where it sounds like you don't know that much about a certain project, or if I dive in and kind of keep on asking questions about it, and you don't know anything, that raises a huge red flag. Number two, discounting the behavioral interview section. So a lot of candidates will prepare a lot for the technical interview. They'll do a ton of lead code, they'll uh, use interview query for all their technical case questions. And then after a while, when they actually jump onto the interview loop, they realize that they're getting rejected because of the fact that they're not answering some of the behavioral questions correctly, or that the recruiters or the hiring managers just screened them out in the very beginning for these kind of culture fits. It's, it's important to nail down the behavioral interview questions because those kind of decide what kind of team player you are and someone that I want to work with. Is this person also showing initiative for all their things and demonstrating good qualities of like a hard worker, right? It's really that simple. But I think like the most common question that I've heard people mess up is just when they ask, why do you want to work at this company, right? And if you don't have like a good reason for why you want to work at the company, then you sound really dumb. Uh, once when I was an intern, I got a, one of my first interview requests was for this um, company called Otis, which designs elevators. And they design almost every single elevator in the world or from what I've heard. But when they asked me why I wanted this internship, I told them some stupid reason off the top of my head while, why I always liked the buttons in the elevator panel and that I always wondered, wondered what it would be like to work there one day and design elevators. And obviously the recruiter did not buy it because I just had no idea what to say. And so I'd say for a lot of these situations, really do your research, understand you know, why you wanna work at this company and specifically come up with a great reason to do so, right? Because if you don't actually wanna work at that company, then uh, why are you doing the interview anyway? The third most common mistake I see people do is they only practice questions on interview query and lead code that are asked by that company. So if you pay for premium on lead code or interview query, we have this feature where it allows you to see which questions that were previously asked at these uh, companies, right? And so specifically for a lot of candidates, what I see is that they complain that they did all the questions for like Facebook or Bloomberg or Apple, but none of those questions showed up on their interview. And that's not really the point of these learning platforms. Like we built interview query because we wanted to teach people how to think. And the best way to teach you how to think is to go through practice problems and do repetition. And so the point is not to actually try to game the interview and figure out what questions are going to be exactly on it and memorize those answers because that doesn't scale in the long run. You're never going to get uh, a job or do be successful at your job if you're just thinking about gaming the interview. The goal is more, like, more to learn about how to think. And for data science, at least, I think a lot of the interview questions that they ask actually do kind of come up on the job sometimes. And so it's all about kind of learning those frameworks and kind of doing that repetition so that you know how to answer a question that you haven't seen in the future versus just trying to memorize these. Same goes for leak code. I think for leak code, it's all about learning how to actually solve leak code problems really quickly and really effectively, no matter what kind of problem gets thrown at you on the interview. The fourth most common mistake I see is that people don't stop and actually take some time to think before answering a question. This is really common, especially with more junior candidates, is that when they get asked a question, uh, specifically around like a case study, a lot of the time they just kind of jump right in. And so if pretend I was gonna ask you about measuring success of you know elevators and buildings, they would immediately jump into some specific thing like, okay, they're gonna survey a bunch of people, right? And that's not the way that you should go about things. The goal is always to take some time, collect your thoughts, think about all the ideas, and then figure out and prioritize which ones you think are best, right? When you jump right into a question, right, you're basically bottling it up and you're taking the first idea that comes out of your head and you're expanding on that. But that's not great because you wanna like let 10 to 15 different ideas kind of come out of that like, come out of that brain flow and then evaluate them, right? And we don't wanna jump into the first thing that we always think of. And so definitely best way to like solve this is just always just take some time, take a minute, take two minutes, ask the interview if you can take two minutes and basically just 
collect your thoughts and think about the best ideas, iterate on them. The fifth most common mistake that I see candidates in interviews, and this is kind of outside, not exactly related, but it's just not doing enough research on the company to understand if it's a good fit for you. And the reason why I say this is because I feel like nowadays candidates have a lot of options, right? There's a huge job shortage right now. There's not enough people to fill all these technical positions. And so as candidates, we have a lot of leverage. Depends on if you're entry level or you're a little bit more senior, but generally there's a lot more leverage as a candidate nowadays than there was, you know, five years ago. So because of that, we have to really think about if this job is going to be a good fit for us. And I think that a lot of times, if you do a lot of interviews and you make it down to like the end of the line, you're going to find that you might not actually want this job. Sure, it gives you some leverage when negotiating different offers. But at the same time, is it worth going through all that time to kind of really like interview and all that brain mental energy that you're kind of exhausted, right? And so I think the goal overall is always just to find companies that you're actually interested in working at, doing the research and just kind of then thinking about being very intentional with your interviewing process, right? I see a lot of people that kind of just take the first job that they get offered. And that's really not the way that you should think about something where you're going into work for eight hours uh, every single, you know, five days a week, basically. And it's taking up like a third of your time for this, you know, just a nameless kind of corporation that's giving you checks, right? Like we don't want that. Generally you want there to be a good partnership either way. So just be a little bit more intentional with your interviewing, make sure that you have like a good plan, make sure that you want to work at these companies and overall have your priorities straight. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't, please like and subscribe. And if you guys have any other ideas for videos you'd like me to do, please leave it in the comments below and let me know what you think about those kind of common mistakes that I just pointed out. All right. Thanks. Bye.